Hi guys, welcome to the second of three videos today and uh, the final uh, day of the um, sort of new wave of Tesco beers that I'm reviewing this week. So, uh, so far we've reviewed the uh, New England IPA from Brewdog versus Cloud Water. So the next one, which we have already reviewed in bottle form, but I thought because it's been released now in um, Forge 40 mil can, I thought I'd take a look at the Hazy Jane New England IPA, locking in at 7.2% ABV by Brewdog. So, just a little bit of a blurb on the back. An all-out New England patriot of beer. Brace yourself for a full tilt fruit hit, pineapple, mango, stone fruit, and a hint of lime. Head for the state line. Brewed with oats and wheat and left unfiltered for a smooth ride. Fall for the East Coast Crush, which ironically is uh, a session uh, New England pale that Brewdog do. Hazy Jane, clouded clarity for the IPA generation. And I've got to say, Brewdog's cans look very handsome with that design uh, in a 440 mil form. So, let's see how this goes then. So I already uh, drank this in bottle form and really enjoyed it, but I can't remember any sort of like distinct characteristics. Uh, so I thought a revisit would be good. And then um, after I reviewed this, uh, I can produce the final video and uh, compare the two cans of beer because they're both Brewdog New England IPAs with about 0.6 uh, ABV between them. So beer in a glass then, and uh, yeah, that's what you expect. Um, it's got a little bit of that uh, bold chicken stock look to it, uh, sort of like peach, mango, and <coughs> excuse me, sort of like peach and mango. I was going to say papaya, but not really. Don't know why I wanted to say papaya. It's as if I'm scripted. Uh, but yeah, peach, mango, and apricot. That's what it reminds me in terms of its colour. Sort of like you've got the, and I said this for the. Uh, that, I'm going to stop referring to the other beer because we're going to be doing a comparison in the next video. But yeah, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Looks very dense and chewy. And a beer poured with about just shy of a, a small half finger's worth of white head. So let's see what we get on the nose. little gentle bit of like a pink grapefruit blood orange there it's a little bit of a dank edge it's got that slight caramelized oniony garlicky aroma a little bit of resin fragrant mango i'd say a little bit of um papaya actually it's a little bit of tartness of passion fruit in there peach Nectarin, yeah, it smells really good. Um, it is a bit more of a subdued aroma, but when you get your nose in there and take a big sniff, that's what she said, then yeah, it's a really pleasant smelling beer. So let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. That's a lovely little beer. It really, really is. It's more to me on the sort of sweet citrusy side in terms of like fruity hop character. Um, but there is that, you know, quintessential mango, pineapple, sort of tropical fruit vibe going on. There's a little bit of sweetened lemon character, I'd say. Not really any zingy citrusiness. Gentle bitterness on the back end. It is a bit more of a sweeter um, IPA, I would say. Body is really nice and bold, so a nice creamy texture to it. It's not going to be the heaviest of uh, New England IPAs that you'll ever drink, but it's still got a very satisfying um, body. Lovely sweet fruity tones. Yeah, it, it's it's flavorful, but it's simple at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Um, is it going to compare with the likes of you know, your Treehouse and Trillions um, and you know, your other halves, Verdant's, Cloudwaters, uh, North, Polly's Brew? You, know, you could name drop a whole multitude of breweries. 
No, but it's one of those. See, a lot of Brewdog beers have a very Brewdog taste, if that makes sense. There's something about the way Brewdog brew their beers, especially when it comes to the pale beers, where you can distinctly tell that it's a Brewdog beer. But this kind of doesn't have that. Hops are used, utilised beautifully in this beer. It really, really is. And it's drinking way easier than 7.2%. It really, really is. You could get yourself way too carried away on this beer. It's approaching like double IPA territory. What I would say is though, there is a slight hint of a medicinal edge um, towards the, the latter third of the beer, I would say. But it's nothing too distracted or intrusive. <laughs> you can't really hold it against the beer, to be honest. It's got it's got that slight greenness. I mean, when was this brewed? In Hazy Trust, twenty uh, fifth of the first twenty. So I'm not sure when this was brewed because um, I don't think they would have put a year shelf life on a beer like this. I'm gonna hazard a guess at maybe six months um so what are we on now we're on the 18th of august these beers at the time of recording this video have been around for just over a week i would say maybe maybe a little bit less maybe a little bit more so i can't imagine that they would put this out when it's like a few months old do you know what i mean so i'm not sure when it is but it's it's got so full of flavour and fresh, there's no inkling of hop fade at all. I wouldn't expect it because it is a new beer. But yeah, I love how simple and enjoyable it is. And um, the one thing I will say in the, the review previously, the Cargo Water First Brewdog, I'm starting to see Brewdog get back up there. Do you know what I mean? I mean, their, their derbies for the last couple of years have just been monumental. Um, their Imperial Stouts have been just top draw. Um, their the, like Baltic Porters and Barrel Age stuff have been really good. I've enjoyed the last couple of uh, abstract beers. But I always thought that their pale beers were like lacking slightly. Um, Clockwork Tangerine uh, reintroduced it. It was nice, but it didn't have that that citrusy, genuine citrusy fruitiness that the previous uh, year's batch had. But that being said, um, what was it? They, they even quote it on here, don't they? The uh, East Coast Crush, like a session New England Pale slash IPA, like 4.2% or something like that, uh, showing up at my local um, co-op. And I've bought you know, a few four packs of that uh, since it's been there. So it, it's really good to see Brewdog producing really good pale beers again. Uh, because, you know, Punk IPA was, you know, it was a pioneer of a beer. I mean, then, uh, like, the du Brewdog's double, I double IPA, like, West Coast game back in the day was just untouchable in the UK. Um, but, of course, you know, things happened, after, you know, you, you got that impression that it was more about the advertising and getting the brand out there than it was the beer. Um, then Punk obviously suffered as, as a result of that. The recipe changed, the ABV got shrunk down. I still think Punk, uh, batch, there's a bit too much batch variation, um, I find, with Punk. Uh, but on tap, at their bars, even in you know um, a well-maintained um, Weatherspoons, uh, Punk IPA is really good. Perfect gig beer, that sort of thing. Elvis juice, still tasting beautiful, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it's really good to see uh, that Brewdog's pale beer game is getting up there again. Because uh, there was a, like, a real, really big lull, I'm not going to lie, where lots of pale beers just were not um, delivering. And that's why I cancelled my fanzine uh, subscription, just because they, they were weak. Uh, the pale beers were really weak. They really, really were. Um, but yeah, it's really good to see that Brewdog's pale beers are getting up to that level that we uh, expected from them, to be honest. Uh, is there still work to be done? Probably. Um, well, I don't think they're a bad brewery. Uh, you know, they wouldn't have bars all over the world 
Do you know what I mean? They wouldn't have their own airline if their beers weren't good. But then again, some people say, well, people drink stuff like Carlsberg and Stella Rotor. I like a Carlsberg. I like a Heineken. Pabst Blue Ribbon, probably one of my favourite go-to lagers. Um, just because, uh, I don't know. We're not going to get into that debate. Brewdog, Hazy Jane in can form, tasting really damn nice. Uh, in terms of a rating, I can happily give that an 8 out of 10. Three pound a can, you can't go wrong. And uh, yeah, so that's 8 out of 10. Um, if you've already seen the previous video, then we might already have our answer uh, for the next video. But I'm still going to do a comparison because they're both Brewdog. New England IPAs at the end of the day. Release at the... Well, Hayes Jane's been around for a while, let's be honest, but yeah. So the next video you're going to see is me comparing these two. Might even do a bit of a cheeky cuvee. Yeah, I think I'm going to do a cheeky cuvee. We go do cheeky cuvee and see what they taste like. Went from a Mexican to an inbred Wiganer. That's just the way accents go, I guess. And I've probably offended... 0.2% of my audience collectively with that. But anyway, 8 out of 10 for Pulp, uh, I was going to call it Pulp Patriot, but that's a different beer altogether. 8 out of 10 for Maze Jane. Um, me owning the t-shirt is now justified because I actually bought that t-shirt before I'd even taken a sip of Hazy Jane uh, because I'm, I, I like the design. I'm not one of those, you know, fucking people who wears a Ramones t-shirt just because it's a Ramones t-shirt. I don't wear a Ramones t-shirt because I'm not particularly fond of the Ramones, to be honest. But anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, go check out Brewdog down below. Uh, go check out the previous review uh, for today. I hope you've enjoyed um, this week of reviews, um, to be honest. Uh, I know I'm a bit late to the party because everyone else has reviewed them already. They pretty much reviewed them within a few days of them being released in Tesco's, but uh, I've just been scheduling uh, videos quite far ahead, to be honest. Um, so that's why you've not seen me doing like, look at these new Tesco beers, like the day that they were released. Uh, just because I couldn't be asked, quite frankly, because I knew for a fact my local Tesco's would have only a, a portion of uh, the beers that I wanted to drink. Anyway, I think it's great that Tesco's are doing this. Um, it definitely helps me. Um, save a little bit of money but drink great beer at the same time and uh, yeah I'm not going to go in a preachy you know, soapbox moment where it's like you know, buy from the supermarkets but yeah, you can support the independent retailers do what you want to do you know, you're consuming it, it's your money that you're spending, money talks opinions walk anyway, that's not a saying so I'm going to cut this video off there Thank you guys for watching, and uh, yeah, are you a fan of this beer? Are you a fan of Brewdog? What are your thoughts and opinions on the Tesco's range? And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll join me tonight for the last video in this uh, series of Tesco Beers Mark II. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Because I've got a feeling, going off again, I've got a feeling that I might get different characteristics from each beer. Now that they're going to be head to head, we shall see. That's the beauty of having a, an untrained palate. Thank you for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers.